Well, China is sending a high-level special envoy to North Korea tomorrow, the first high-level Chinese official to visit Pyongyang in two years. The move coming days after President Trump asked Beijing to do more to rein in Kim Jong-un. President Trump on Twitter today called it a, quote, big move. Well, joining me now is Fred Flights, senior vice president at the Center for Security Policy and former chief of staff to Ambassador John Bolton. Uh, Fred, will the envoy make any difference? Uh, David, it's good to be here. This is a significant development, and I think it stems from the president's successful trip to Asia. But we have to put this in perspective. North Korea and China have exchanged envoys like this on several occasions since 2013. Uh, on some occasions, both nations refused to accept an envoy from the other. Uh, North Korea sent an envoy to China in 2016, but nothing has happened. What's different here is that I think we have a president in the U.S. that both nations believe could possibly use force if necessary. And I think China is very worried about the possibility of war in the Korean Peninsula and a possible nuclear accident if North Korea continues to test these enormous right. nuclear devices underground. Well, actually, there's evidence that there already has been accidents that they're covering up. I mean, evidence of, of malformed babies uh, being born in regions around the, where the uh, nuclear explosions have taken place. So a lot of the damage is done. And that's part of the reason why the president has set a very high goal uh, it's denuclearization of North Korea. It's not just stopping testing. It's getting rid of all their nukes. That's a pretty high bar. It is, but I mean, that's the position that the United States should be taking. North Korea doesn't need this nuclear arsenal. Uh, there's, there's signs at the earth near the test site. Uh, the topography has actually changed. The earth is sinking. There could be a major collapse, a huge release of radiation if North Korea continues to test these weapons. That's gotten China's attention. But can you denuclearize without military action, with just, say, an envoy? No. What will be necessary is significant pressure from China, a determined approach by the United States. And frankly, I don't know that that will work. But to this, to, right until recently, we haven't had full cooperation by China with sanctions. It looks like we're getting that right now. The envoy may help. Fred, I want to switch to Russia, if I can. Uh, as you probably know, we've been talking a lot about Russia and the Democrats and Hillary. Fusion GPS, the Trump dossier, Uranium One. Of all these incidences, you know, it's interesting that we have a special counsel now who's who's going after guys who had something to do with Ukraine, uh, a guy who might have had something to do with Turkey. But here are actual incidences involving Russia interference or charges of interference with the election. And we don't hear much about Mueller going after that. Why not? You know, I don't know. But what I'm really stunned by, the recent development I find very stunning, is that Glenn Simpson, the co-founder of Fusion GPS, met with that Russian attorney before and after she was involved in that June 2016 right. meeting with Donald Trump Jr. And it makes me think that Fusion GPS set up Donald Trump Jr. and was paid to do so by the Democrats. And by the way, uh, th there is a guy, we have to get into Russian history a little bit, there's a guy named Sergei Magnitsky. Uh, mm -hmm. after whom there was a special act name. There he is. He was killed in prison. Putin didn't like this guy. He made sure that he died in prison. Most people think he was killed in prison. Uh, the, the Fusion GPS people, Glenn Simpson, the guy who started that, did a smear campaign against this dead man. Uh, God knows how that affected the family. Uh, and one must think that that was at Putin's bidding because it was, it was in Putin's interest to have this guy killed. That just shows you where the fusion people are. They're on the side of Putin. They were doing Putin's bidding. They never registered as foreign agents. Do you think they should have? Naturally. And, I mean, they're smear merchants. They've worked for the Russians. They work for the Democrats. They paid a British intelligence officer to get information to smear Donald Trump from the Russians. And they were paid by the Democratic National Committee yep. and the Clinton Foundation. This needs to be investigated. And, by the way, they may have been paid by the FBI as well. What does that make you think? I'm very troubled by that. In addition, this information from this dossier, the Fusion uh, Anti-Trump dossier, was actually used by intelligence agencies in a presidential daily brief. I mean, there, there's a lot here, and, and this needs to, we can't let this be the new normal for American politics and campaigns. That's why it needs to be investigated. And by the way, all that done at the bidding of Putin, or at least in his favor, so one must assume he was on the side of getting that information out. Fred Flight, it's great to see you. Thank you, sir, for being here. Appreciate Good it. Good to be here.